All right, welcome back to The Daily Drop. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. If you've never been here before, we do this every single day. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Most people haven't. And uh, make sure you get notified when we do these things because we do them every single weekday and there's tons to learn. Uh, and there's time I can learn from you, from your, your feedback and your contribution. So join us. Today we're talking about Timberland, excuse me, Timberland axleless suspension setups on trailers. They're a hot topic in the Overland world. There are some things to consider as far as the pros and cons, some of the maybe struggles I've had with mine I can share with you. And hopefully that'll give you a more educated decision on whether or not you should run it. But to give you an idea of what I am talking about when, I, when, I, when I'm talking about Timberland Axleless setup, Timberland Axleless trailer, uh, images. Okay, so this is a suspension system that is independent. The left and the right has its own uh, suspension kind of setup, the left and the right wheels. Uh, usually you don't have an axle connecting the two. Sometimes you have a cross member in this receiver tube to reinforce it. Uh, but it's, it's an independent uh, 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 suspension, you know, trailer suspension setup. You can get them in all kinds of configurations, load ratings, uh, spindle sizes, stuff like that. So a lot of different choices in this kind of setup. But the gist is you get independent suspension and it's, and it's based off these rubber jounces and usually what, what it yields is a, is a much smoother ride in your trailer if you install it correctly and, and, and configure it correctly. But there are some other big pros as well that I'm going to jump into when it comes to timber and axleless setups. Okay, so pros first. Uh, I, like, I like to start with the pros. One is the ride quality. When I moved my trailer over from the old leaf springs to the timberans, I got way better ride, especially empty. Okay, especially with the trailer empty, it just rode so much better. And here's the reason. Most trailer suspension systems are set up with very short, very short leaf springs that just don't have a bunch of damping or don't have a very forgiving spring rate. And so it's super jarring and super, super harsh. And so all that gear that is in the trailer really gets tossed around. And if you've got, excuse me, if you've got food in there or you've got a fridge or whatever, you know, things get tossed around really bad and, you, and, it, and it transfers into the vehicle too, into the tow vehicle. So it really helps with ride quality, but here's the caveat. You have to choose the proper load rating. Do not go with a super, super heavy suspension from Timberland. Uh, just like normal suspension rules, uh, they apply here. You have to uh, apply the appropriate rating to the trailer that you're building or you're outfitting. Okay, so if you have a question on that, contact them. Timberin will help. If, if you can tell them your trailer weight, what you intend to use it for, they'll help you build in the proper tolerance and will hook you up with, with a, a properly rated suspension system. Because if you go too high and you try to overshoot it and build in tolerance because you think you're going to really beat, beat on your trailer, you're going to end up with a super harsh ride. Okay, so if you spec it correctly, you'll have a much better riding system. You get better articulation the way the, 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 the trailer kind of travels off-road and off-camber situations. I just feel like it's way more confident. Uh, thirdly, you get great ground clearance with a setup like this. Even if you have to run that crossbar I was talking about because your frame rail or your frame setup requires it. Again, see the, this little two-inch receiver tube? Sometimes you have to run a two-inch pipe two inch square tube from one end to the other to have reinforcement to make it really strong. Even with that cross member, the, your ground clearance is way better. It's it's incredible how much more ground clearance you have with a timber and setup uh, without the axle that has to connect the, the hubs and the, and the wheels together and stuff. So that is a huge pro to a setup like this. And that also kind of leads into, you have more room to work with underneath the body of the vehicle or the body of the trailer for mounting things like water tanks and stuff like that. Now you don't have the axle of a typical suspension setup to protect say a water tank. Usually a lot of times people will just put the, um, will put the tank right over top of it or right near the axle for natural protection. You, you're not going to have that with this kind of setup, but you do get more real estate to work with. The axle won't inhibit uh, on your, you know, mounting uh, options and stuff like that as much as a typical traditional 
suspension setup. Now here are the cons, and they're big. You need to consider them heavily. Number one for me, my biggest problem with this setup, now that I've run it for a couple years, is alignment. It is tough, it, or it can be tough, to get a Timbrin setup aligned, okay? Because your, your, your suspension, your left and right suspension is totally independent, it can be tough to get your toe correct. You have to measure it. You have to be pretty intuitive about how you do your toe in or your toe out uh, alignment. So just know that going in, have a plan, maybe check out some of the videos on how people have done it. There's not a ton of information out there on the best way to align a timber and set up, even something simple as toe, right? So you gotta find the exact center line of the trailer. You have to measure each side, each each uh, each wheel's toe against that, that center line and then you have to you know, correspond left and right together. It can be hard and there's not a lot of room, there's not a lot of tolerance for error before you start to get some really bad tire wear. So have a plan, execute it, be really patient and dial it in or you're gonna eat through tires pretty quick if you use your trailer often. It can also be really difficult to get your camber correct with a Timberin setup if you're using say an old trailer, right? So if, if you're trying to outfit an M416 or an old Sears trailer like I have, or an old Ben-Hur trailer, just any trailer that's already manufactured, they, they'll, they often use uh, open C frames, or even if they use, use you know box frames, they're usually twisted a little bit. It, it's not, the, the, an old trailer usually is a little bit out of square just from years of abuse. and. Being out of square really affects the alignment of a timber and setup. And you, there's only so much common, compensating you can do in the suspension setup to, uh, to essentially make up for that. Okay, so if you've got an old trailer like mine that, that might be a little bit out of square, or maybe it's a frame that just isn't super sufficient, uh, you might have a hard time getting it aligned. Like I've had such a hard time getting my camber correct uh, I've had to run the cross tube that I was talking about earlier for, for reinforcement because I'm just my the frame on my trailer is is just angle you know it's really really intuitive it, or really there's a lot of engineering and ingenuity behind it but it's just angle and there's nothing really to there's not a ton of support for this kind of setup so you, I have to run the cross member but I've had a heck of a time getting my camber dialed as well as the toe, you know, they kind of affect each other, especially if you're eyeballing this or, or just running off a tape measure and plumb lines. It can be really hard to dial in your alignment, okay? Uh, another big con to timber and setups is field servicing, okay? They don't use super common parts. The bearings and stuff, the outer bearings and the races, that, that kind of stuff, yes, you can get off the shelf, but when you actually get into the suspension setup, there's not a lot to go wrong here, right? You've got a you've got a pivot point and with a, a bolt through, and you've got the rubber jounces. But if that stuff were to go south, you're not going to find parts off the shelf to replace it. Usually, you're going to have to replace kind of the whole assembly uh, as an assembly. And if you got stuff welded in and stuff, it can be a tough field repair. Usually, this is a bulletproof system. If you install it correctly, there's not a lot to go wrong. But when things do go wrong, if something breaks or shears. It can be tough to service. Again, the spindle and really the spindle out, that kind of stuff you can buy off the shelf, but the actual suspension part of the system can be difficult to service in the field. And really the last con to a setup like this, it's expensive, okay? It's really expensive. As you can see, this is the heavy duty, uh, long spindle, no drop, right? That means it doesn't, it doesn't have a compensated you know, lift height built into it. It's 800 bucks, okay? It's 800 bucks just for this setup. Um, it's not cheap, but if you, so what I did when I was building my trailer, I knew I wanted to get rid of my, my short leaf springs on the trailer because I just needed better dampening. I needed better performance. You know, I just needed better spring rates and stuff. And, and due to physics that, you know, I can't really explain, but the longer your spring, the, the better performance, the softer your ride's gonna be. And, you know, adding all that up, running YJ springs with, with proper shackles and getting a new axle and with brakes and all that stuff, really, it was almost a wash. It was only like 150 or 200 bucks more to run a Timberin setup. I decided to run the Timberin. Now that I'm, I run the Timberin, I've had a really hard time with alignment. I still think I made the right choice. I'm still dialing it in. 
uh, just know, you know, there are cons to what is an incredible suspension setup, like like all great things. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Timbrin Axelist setup. This one got a little long. Thanks for hanging with me. If you've got something to add, let me know. I'd love to hear your experience with the Timbrin setup. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. I'm going to pick this back up on Monday. You guys have a great weekend. If you have a request for what you want to hear next, let me know. If you want to be on the channel, let me know. If you've got something to add, if I think it's, it's valuable and something worth sharing, then I'll get you on here. But thanks again for watching. See you next time. Uh, as always, have a great weekend. All right.